State of Affairs is honored to have United States Congressman Josh Gottheimer, who is uh, from the 5th Congressional District. Good to see you, Congressman. Good to see you. Thanks for Any having me. Anything happening in Washington? <laughs> no, 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 nothing to see. Yeah. By the way, tell folks real quick about your background before you got to the United States Congress. Most recently, I was at Microsoft. Uh, I spent time at Ford Motor Company. And early in my career, I was a speechwriter for President Bill Clinton. Hmm. So in and out of the private sector. Let's talk about speechwriting, tone, tenor. Um, we're doing this in the summer, moving toward July. Yeah. Uh, it'll be seen very soon. The reaction to the horrific, excuse my voice, uh, the reaction to the horrific events uh, in Virginia in, uh, involving m members of Congress playing baseball, staff, and one of your colleagues who was seriously injured. What's been the reaction? It was a, it's been, it was a tough week last week. And, and the last, you, you know, I think overall this just brought to bear what a lot of us know, right? I mean, it's just the polarization in politics overall is, it's, it's... How it's, polarized are we, Josh? I mean, I think if you read social media or watch the news or you listen to how people speak about each other, I think it's way too polarized. But what's interesting, and I've seen this in, in Washington now, I've, I've just been down there since January, so I'm new. But what you realize is that most of us across the aisle, and I, I spend a lot of time speaking to Democrats and Republicans because I think that's very important, um, most of us get along really well and people treat each other nicely. What happens is, you know, you, the cable shows and the social media and, and just how, and the institution isn't built right now to encourage people to work together, right? It's, it's you, you almost, you're disincentivized to. So those of us who are spending a lot of time working across the aisle, and I, I co-chair something called the Problem Solvers Caucus. Right. And uh, so I'm very focused on, let's sit down and actually talk to each other. I believe the best way to, to settle things down and work, and, and, and we've got to lessen this polarization is to actually talk to each other. And you know, if you, you know this, if you've done business with people, uh, it, it starts with relationships, and those relationships are really important. However, on policy, part of our country, a big part of our country, is disagreeing, doing it vehemently but respectfully. You have serious questions, and we're doing this program, as we said, uh, toward the last week of June. We don't know exactly what's going to happen with the United States Senate right. and the deliberations around repealing the Affordable Care Act and replacing it. What are your thoughts? You know, talking about bipartisan engagement, uh, unfortunately on this health care bill, this was not one of those moments where Democrats and Republicans sat down. This was, it was sort of a partisan bill and kind of jammed through. And, and whereas things like tax reform and infrastructure, there's a lot more bipartisan work going on to try to get somewhere. Um, this health care bill, and we'll see what happens through the Senate and how this ultimately turns out. But I'll tell you, what passed out of the House was not good for New Jersey. Why? The, the biggest reason, I mean, there's several reasons. One, Medicaid dollars and resources to the state. We pay some of the highest taxes in the country, and we get some of the worst return on, uh, for our tax so dollars. So hold on one second. Yeah. Medicaid is being yeah. talked about, um, and the argument that's made by President Trump and others who support this effort are, hey, wait a minute, what are we talking about? It's a block grant. We let the states control it. Let the states control Medicaid, you say? Well, so here's the issue. For New Jersey, and my job is to represent the state of New Jersey, uh, and, and specifically the 5th Congressional District, northern New Jersey. You should tell people where the 5th is? Bergen, Sussex, Warren, uh, and Passaic counties. Um, so northern, northwest part, northwest, part of the, northwest part of the state. Here's the problem. The, med, the Medicaid resources that we've been getting under this legislation will go way down to the tune of a $4,000 tax hit for each family in the state of New Jersey. So the dollars that we've been getting, the resources we've been getting, that have been coming under the ACA, will, the under, this change, yes, under this change, under this change, proposed change, will go significantly down and will hit our pocketbooks in New Jersey, right? I, and I just don't think we can afford another $4,000 family hit. One, two, if you are over 50, you get hit with Some something of called, us are, the, right, called the senior tax. You look better. Um, <laughs> called, the, called the senior tax, right? Right. It allows insurance companies to charge more than five times what they would charge people. Five? Under 50, five times in premiums, five times. Right. Then you have something, uh, another hit on Medicaid. You know, Medicaid covers a lot of long-term care facilities. A lot of our, our parents and grandparents are in facilities. Three That's out right. Of, so three out of five of them will lose, if we, if with, under this legislation, will take a significant hit. And talking to many facilities, many may not be able to provide care anymore, and you could actually throw seniors out of their, 
nursing homes. So this is just practical reality, right? And and you know you can many of us think we need to fix the ACA. I'll, I'll be the first one. Many. I campaign on it. I can't. And, and many this. Republicans argue, Congressman, yeah. that we have to lower cost, and the ACA created more cost, and we have to change this. And it's not fair to small business owners. I, and 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 they I need I, to make yeah. these changes. Yeah. You say? Well, first of all. I've, I've worked very hard on, actually, I've, uh, I've voted for legislation so that we can work with small business owners and co-ops and, and ways to take that on. And I'm not saying we don't need to fix the ACA. I campaigned on fixing the ACA. This is not a fix. It's a gut job, right? It's, it's going to hurt, and it's, it's, not, it's, not an, it's not a fix. And it's very bad for us in New Jersey and for seniors. Why would the Republicans and, do this? I don't know. You've got you to gotta really no, ask no, them. No, but you have talked to them. Feel, Why do well, they say they're doing it? I feel like it? they think they need to deliver on... They spent seven years saying we're going to throw out Obamacare, right? Seven years saying it. And I think they feel like they've got to deliver. And by the way, I'm not saying we shouldn't fix it, but it takes sitting down in a room, just like you and I are sitting here at this table. It takes us sitting down and actually saying, okay, let's be constructive in how we fix it. Like, I'm against the Cadillac tax. I think the medical device tax in it, both two provisions in it right now that need to go. And, there, and I can give you a laundry list of other provisions that we've got to deal with, but this is not a solution. But, but Congressman, many of the people who voted for Donald Trump yeah. appear to be the ones, based on the Congressional Budget Office analysis, as 24, 23, 24 million Americans may potentially lose their insurance. Many of the people who voted for Donald Trump are some of the ones who are going to be adversely impacted by this. Do you think people know that? You know, I hope that people are getting the facts. Do, do I think people all know that the pre, that what they'll suddenly qualify as a pre-existing condition, right? If you, uh, right, it's not just if you had cancer or uh, have other diseases. There's mm. also these other pre-existing conditions. If you've a woman had a, a, a C-section, you're suddenly considered a pre-existing condition, and they can charge you more or deny certain services. An insurance to company you. can. Insurance company can because it'll be considered a pre-existing condition. You know, you th th here's another provision. If you throw out the ACA, throw it out, not fix it. You throw it out. The, do you know what the donut hole is? That's yes. what, right. It can the the so ACA, about Medicaid D exactly with, Medicaid or, Part D. Right, the Congressman's so, so, explain this. Right, it's our Medicare Part D. Right, where you close. So over time, it's it's what your parents and grandparents or all of us pay up front for prescription drugs. Then there's a then there's a gap that comes out of your pocket, and then it's pick, Medicare picks it back up again. If you kill the ACA, it blow and the ACA was closing that hole by 2020. It'd be gone. There'd be no there'd be no gap. Mm. This blows it right back open, $2,000 a year to seniors if you, if you take a lot of prescription drugs and cost you $2,000 a year. These are just facts, and you're, you're, you're exactly right. We just have to get the facts out. There are plenty of things that we can work on together. I'm just worried about the way this is being done. A couple things. Number one, uh, there is going to be a member of the congressional delegation who happens to be Republican on a future edition, hopefully the next time we join you, on the next taping of State of Affairs that will offer a different perspective. Not that every Republican agrees with what's going on. You know that three out of the five in, of our Republican delegation voted against the bill. I do know that, yeah. but we are going to get a member of the delegation who did vote for the bill and offer a different perspective. Okay. Donald Trump, you say? <laughs> That's a broad question. What That's the question. What specifically? What impact do you think he's had on the nation in terms of our ability to solve the serious problems we have? I'll be more specific. Yeah. Well, here's what I think. I, I am hopeful. Uh, that and what I'm talking about, I'm, what I'm, how I'm approaching this, I believe if you want to get things done, you have to work with all the parties. Can you work with President Trump? Uh, I met with the White House work? last week. No, not the White House. Do you think you can work with President Trump? You could sit, if you got a chance to sit with President Trump. Would I sit with him? Of course. Do you think you'd have a meaningful conversation about policy? I would hope so, yeah, of course. Yeah. I think it's, I think, I would hope that we, you know, whether, and I, and by the way, worked with talking to the White House on tax reform, on infrastructure, on, on issues that I believe are critical to us. And you know, we've got to fix, we, we can't have the ninth worst roads in the country. You can't have it that we had the worst on time numbers in the country, New Jersey tran Transit, last year. That's not okay. So you we think have the president's issues. committed to doing something about infrastructure? He says he is. You think he's ever going to get to it, what's going on in terms of the investigations at every level? Um, I'm still I confident that we can, uh, so I am still part of the group that's confident that if we actually sit down and work together, with the White House, with the Senate, we'll get tax, we can get tax reform done, we can get infrastructure done. I think they need to go together. Define tax reform. Be specific. What does it mean? What, lo, getting, the, getting the rates down. Closing a bunch of the loopholes up in the shelters, getting the rates down across the board. Um, you can't have it. Our, our, our tax rates on businesses are the highest 
uh, in all the OCD countries in the world, all the big countries around the world, we have the highest tax rates. It's actually forcing jobs overseas and companies to leave, as you know, our country. That's not okay. Right? So I think we need to get, in New Jersey, our taxes are out of control. Right? They just are at every level. You add it up and it's causing businesses and people to leave. We're not gaining, we're losing people. Mm. And millennials, whether you're a millennial or you're a senior, you're leaving our state. I'm, I, I believe we've got an incredible, we live in an incredible place, incredible schools, beautiful parks. I love raising my kids here. We need to make sure that going forward, we do everything possible so that we, we stay that way. You think uh, President Trump is dangerous? I think he's dangerous? Yes. No, I think that... You don't I'm, think he's dangerous but, to this nation? Well, it depends on what area. Do I think what he's doing... Do you think the way the president policy? communicates publicly, primarily through social media slash Twitter, do you think it's dangerous for this country? I really believe it's unhelpful that he tweets out things in the middle of the night. Um, I think the best way to actually engage is to have constructive conversation. He argues that he needs to communicate directly with the American people, you say? I don't mind people engaging directly. I engage directly with my... Yeah, you do. You have very I, strong I, social media with, I, with my constituents. But I think it's how you do it. And, you know, I think it's really important. Tone is really important. If you want to make sure that we... You, you started this conversation by talking about yeah. it last week. If we want to make sure that we um, have constructive conversation, you know, you've got to be careful in the words you choose, right? I mean, it's, it's something I learned very early in my career. You've got to be smart about the words you choose. And, and I have no problem with the president communicating directly. I just want to make sure it's how we communicate with each other is really important. You're optimistic. It's interesting. You ran in a very nasty, ugly race. You have a minute left. Uh, Scott Garrett was the incumbent. Right. Do you believe campaigns can really be run on the issues, on the merits, without the personal attacks? Or is this just the way it is? I ran on a lot of issues. Um, so I believe you're going to... They got nasty. Your race got nasty. It, did, unfo it did, unfortunately, get Is that nasty. just the way it gets, Josh? Congressman, well, is that just the way it is? No, I, please, please call me, Josh. I would hope so. I would hope that we can run more, more constructive races and not actually have, have to get into that stuff. But also, I believe you run things on the difference of issues. And my campaign actually was about the difference, really on the difference between the candidates. And I think it's mm. okay to talk about the difference between candidates. But let's get to the issues that's first. That's not second. dirty or nasty. That's just healthy. Yeah, that's getting into the issues, yes. you know? And so I, I, so I think you, there's a difference between personal attacks and getting into the issues. Congressman Josh Gottheimer, 5th Congressional District. I want to thank you for joining Thanks. us. Thanks Don't let it be me. the last time. Thanks for having me. Thanks for this, uh, joining us this edition of State of Affairs. Continue the conversation. Follow me on Twitter, at Steve Adubato. Promise. See you next time. Thank you, Josh. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Agnes Veris NJTV studio at Two Gateway. Funding has been provided by St. Peter's University, JFK Medical Center, Qualcare Inc., Fedway Associates, New Jersey State Nurses Association, and the Institute for Nursing, Verizon, and by Suez. Promotional support provided by Observer New Jersey Politics, and by Commerce Magazine.